This is a Sports Radio Live podcast covering your world of sports. Brian Houston Sports Radio Live. It's weekdays at 3 on 99.3 Talk FM. Now on the, the Apec Talk VIP of East hotline, Texas. cutting edge training for the serious athlete, apecgo.com. Joining us now, a guy who used to work for the Tyler Morning Telegraph and now is uh, working big time. He's for Rivals.com, Olin Buchanan. How you doing, Olin? I'm doing very well. It's good to be back on the radio in Tyler, my old uh, my old stomping ground. Well, we miss you down here, but we know you're having a good time up there, and you're primarily covering uh, the recruiting beat now. How was it going through your uh, first national signing day and recruiting season? Well, uh, you know, I've been through some uh, signing days before, and they're always crazy. It's uh, you know, it's nonstop. You know, you're looking to make sure that uh, everybody goes uh, where they say they're going to go and you're looking for uh, uh, you know for any surprise and there's always some that uh, pop up so it's always uh, a, a lot of fun and a, uh, a lot of angst and uh, yeah, a lot of work but it's a good time well one of the things that uh, we saw last week when you were talking about guys that uh, changed their commitment we had Dalton Santos the linebacker from Van who had committed to Tennessee months ago uh, Mac Brown and uh, and Manny Diaz come in to Van uh, the weekend before National Signing Day and uh, they do their magic and he immediately flipped but he wanted to be at texas anyway but you saw a lot of that didn't you yeah there's there's always uh are some guys that flip and, and a lot of times it has to do with uh, uh uh a coach uh moving or you know anything's happening like that you know we saw that uh for instance university of california looked like they were going to have a uh you know a, a, maybe a top 10 national recruiting class and then they're uh, best recruiter and defensive line coach Tosh Lapoy um, was hired at Washington. So uh, when he left, a lot of guys flipped over that that Cal had uh, had commitments from flipped over to Washington. So we see that happen. We saw the again uh, the kid from Van, um, which was a big loss for Tennessee. I'm up here in Tennessee, and they were really uh, holding their breath. You know, when word came out that he might be uh, uh, looking to change his mind, and they were so disappointed because they need linebackers. Texas does too. Uh, uh, when they heard that Texas was was uh, in on him, you know, there, there was just this feeling of dread. It seems mm-hmm. like over the whole state. Uh, and then, of course, you know, Texas got the kid out of Louisiana uh, that was committed to LSU. But again, you see that happen um, uh, every year. Uh, some schools get hit worse than others. You know, uh, Ohio State. Flipped a lot of guys when when uh, uh, when Urban Meyer took over. Uh, got a lot of guys who were committed to Penn State, but uh, uh, usually see it happen the last week, and every now and then you'll see one, you know, on, on signing day. But for the most part, guys usually go where they, they say they're going. One of the questions I wanted to ask you was with Texas A and M moving into the Southeastern Conference, how much did that affect uh, recruiting? Did you find that uh, Texas kids? Uh, were drawn to the idea of playing in the Southeastern Conference as opposed to playing for the Big 12? What kind of impact did it have? Well, you know, it's interesting. That was supposed to be one of the things that people say, hey, you know, when, for the SEC, when you, uh, uh, when you add uh, Texas A&M, you open the door to recruiting in Texas, but that uh, door was only opened slightly. Uh, I believe my last count, uh, SEC schools other than Texas A&M and Missouri um, – uh, other than those two, but I'm talking about the traditional SEC schools mm-hmm. uh, or, you know, the previous SEC schools, however you want to say it. They only signed, like, I think it was 12 guys from the state of Texas. Uh, and six of those went to Arkansas and three went to LSU, which are, you know, SEC programs that have always recruited Texas anyway. Uh, so you really didn't see that big a difference. Now, maybe you could argue that it, it, uh, that the, uh, adding A&M uh, to the SEC uh, boosted Texas A&M's recruiting class because A&M recruited very well, but uh, and that may be the case. And I know uh, Kevin Sumlin uh, said that he thought it really helped, uh, you know, helped them out in recruiting. Uh, it was an, uh, just an extra carrot that they were able to offer uh, kids. But the fact is that A&M's recruited well before. You know, A&M's right there near Houston, and it's a good school. And it's a big time program, so it's not a, you know, it, it's not a. a uh, a surprise when A&M has a really good recruiting class. And as far as Missouri goes, they signed, I believe it was six kids, maybe seven, if memory serves right, from Texas. But they actually signed fewer uh, prospects from Texas than they had in the past. So it didn't seem to make that big a difference uh, uh, with Missouri. So I'd say in the first year with A&M and Missouri uh, uh, looking to go in, uh, the first time we've seen that, uh, 
that we didn't see a big difference for the SEC as a, a presence in Texas. But you know, we'll have to wait and see. That'll um, we'll find out over time whether it's going to be that you know that big a difference. And what kind of impact did Kevin Sumlin make in general, just to specifically taking over the A and M job from Mike Sherman? Well, I think he did really well, and, and I think Mike Sherman was putting together a really uh, a really good class. So I think what Kevin Sumlin had to do. Uh, his job was to go in there and and be able to to, to keep it together, and, and he was able to do that. And then he, you know, got the kid out of Dallas, the wide receiver Thomas Johnson, who uh, he's one of those that flipped. He had been committed to Texas and decided to go to A and M. Uh, and frankly, I'm sure that he was uh, attracted to uh, Stumlin's uh, style of play. They throw the ball around a lot at Houston. They're going to do the same at at A and M, I'm sure. Uh, so I think that had something to do with it, but. Uh, I would say Kevin Sumlin did very well his first year. Again, uh, A&M had a, a, a top 20 recruiting class, and uh, uh, Sumlin was able to come in and keep almost all the guys that uh, that Mike Sherman got commitments from. So uh, I, I think Sherman did, uh, I'm sorry, I think Sumlin did very well. Now, you mentioned Missouri, and, and one of the things I recall back when Arkansas left the old Southwest Conference to move to the, uh, to the uh, SEC is that they took a hit recruiting in Texas for a while uh, because they weren't coming into Texas and playing on a regular basis anymore. Uh, is that a situation that Missouri could find themselves in where by moving into the SEC and not being a presence in Texas, they literally could uh, kind of shut off the, uh, the tap in Texas? Well, I think that's absolutely something that they're concerned about. They're going to keep recruiting Texas. Texas has been very good to Missouri. I mean, you look at them right now, their starting quarterback uh, is from Lake Dallas uh, up around Denton. And uh, their uh, leading uh, rusher last year, Henry Joseph, he got hurt, but uh, he was their leading rusher in all-conference running back. He's from Angleton, Texas. So Missouri has done very well in Texas, uh, especially in the last, I'd say, you know, eight to ten years. And um, we'll see how they're able to do uh, in the future with only uh, able to tell you know prospects, hey, we're on, you know we're going to play Texas A&M uh, in Texas once ever, or twice in four years. So you're only going to play two home games in your home state uh, when they're in you know the Big Twelve. Is hey, you know the, you know, we may play two games every year, uh, maybe even more than that. So uh, uh, we'll have to wait and see. I know that Gary Pinkle. The Missouri coach has said that they're going to uh, put extra coaches uh, recruiting in uh, Florida uh, and the Atlanta area because, you know, that's uh, a new area that they're going to have to focus on. And, you know, you just have to – it stands to reason that if you're uh, having a bigger presence and having more, uh, you know, assigning a, an extra coach to Florida and one to to, uh, uh, to Atlanta, then, you know, that, that's going to take at least two coaches out of Texas that we're recruiting there, you'd think. So – I, I would. It, it'll be interesting to see what happens, but I would anticipate that that Missouri's not going to be uh, as successful uh, and have as big a presence in Texas in the future. And were you surprised? Uh, we we run the LSU football games here on our radio station, and we've got a pretty sizable contingent of LSU fans, especially toward the east part, heading toward the state line. Were you surprised by uh, how their recruiting season went, uh, considering they were thirteen and zero and playing in the BCS championship game to end up uh, barely in the uh, top twenty in the uh, recruiting when it was all said and done? You know, I think I was a little surprised, uh, but I think what surprised me as much as anything was that, you know, there was uh, more, usually when a guy is coming out of Louisiana and he, and he gets an, uh, a scholarship offer uh, from LSU, you know, you can just about uh, count on it that, that he's going to go to Baton Rouge. Uh, uh, and then, you know, we saw the, the, Shreve, the Shreveport kid, Davis, go to Texas. The, everybody saw Landon Collins go to uh, Alabama over his mother's wishes. There was a mm-hmm. uh, a, a few others, so uh, th- that surprised me. And uh, but but I still think that you know one of the big things that uh, you can offer a kid is playing time. And LSU really has a whole bunch of guys coming back from yeah. from that team, and and they could be number one, uh, the preseason number one team, uh, you know, next season. So. You know, it may be that you just thought, you know, that there were a lot of guys saying, hey, you know what, I, I'm obviously not going to play uh, this year and, and maybe not next year. So, you know, I, I'd like, you know, go to a place where I have a better chance to play. But it, I would uh, I would think uh, LSU's class, 
this year not being ranked as high as as it typically is is a just kind of a blip on the screen. I think uh, you know I wouldn't be surprised if next year they're right there in the in the top ten and top or top five. Okay, uh, and uh, now that the national signing day is over, as far as your responsibilities, where's your focus now going to be in the next few months? Oh, you know, we're going to be looking at trends and recruiting, and uh, uh, you know, uh, right now I'm kind of looking at, at at looking at saying, hey, uh, let's look at some of the uh, metropolitan areas uh, across the country, and and let's see who uh, you know does better, uh, does the best in recruiting those areas, and uh, and why, and then we're. Uh, uh, we're going to be looking at uh, uh, you know all, just all kinds of the trends and recruiting and, and looking for for features and uh, you know there, it, then we'll probably I'm sure rivals will be doing some things on uh, you know uh, uh, look at some uh, preseason th- uh, looks and how teams might stack up. So we're always just trying to give our readers something about college football and college basketball. Look at something new every day. Uh, 365 days a year, so we we just really want to accommodate that uh, crazy college football fan that can't get enough of it. Well, and there's a lot of them out there too. <laughs> thank goodness. <laughs> yes. Hey, Olin, thank you very much. It's great talking to you, and it's great to see that things are going so well for you in your career. We miss you and Tyler, but uh, you're doing a great job over at Rivals, and we do appreciate your time today. Well, thank you very much. Hope everybody down in Tyler's doing great, and uh, it was it was fun to talk to you. Well, come on down and visit sometime, okay? I'll do it. All right, I'll do it. Olin Buchanan from Rivals.com. You can read all of his stuff on the uh, football recruiting homepage there on Rivals.com. Uh, on Brian Houston, Sports Radio Live, 99.3 Talk FM. This is a Sports Radio Live podcast covering your world of sports. Brian Houston Sports Radio Live. It's weekdays at 3 on 99.3 Talk FM, the talk of East Texas.